Sasha's on mute. She has okay. not from capabilities. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to get started. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to start with um, a quick PowerPoint and then we're going to do some videos. So David, I'm not going to see anything so you can let me know if people are joining or typing in the chat or so, so forth. Sounds good. Okay. So welcome to our first virtual workshop um, hosted by Tinkertopia as part of Festival of Science 2020. We're really excited that you're here. Yay. Uh, <laughs> you might be uh, watching on Zoom or you might be watching um, the streaming YouTube on the F Festival of Flagstaff well website. So either way, welcome. So. As you know, we've been doing all sorts of great activities as part of the Festival of Science. Um, we've been distributing steam kits and we've done a geocaching activity. And now this is the first of our online workshops. And today we're gonna talk all about recycling and we're going to build um, some creatures out of recycled materials. So this is one that I created for you that we'll look at a little bit later. So first of all, let's talk about the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Um, each one of these has a slightly different meaning, but both, all three of them are designed to help us uh, improve our environment. So let's look. If we reduce our use, in other words, instead of using um, paper, uh, uh, plastic, um, we can begin using bags that are made out of um, another material that are more durable that we can use over and over. So we can reduce our use of plastic bags. Reusing. Let's go ahead and if we want to, we could take an old t-shirt and an old skirt and take it to a thrift store, or we could turn it into a craft, um, take an old pair of jeans and make it into something else. Uh, maybe a pencil holder in your house. You can glue the denim onto a can. Um, or you might be able to recycle something and that would be to repurpose it um, or to put it into a recycled bin so that it can be used appropriately and sent um, into a recycle facility rather than putting it into the landfill. So this is an illustration done by a student that I thought was really nice um, that was talking about reducing, reusing, and recycling. So let's, you can look at this picture. We can begin by turning off lights and keep stopping drips, uh, donating our clothing, um, reusing things, taking uh, two litter uh, bottles and turning them into flower pots or bird houses, um, all sorts of things that we are able to do that will help us um, keep our, our world a little bit safer. So those of you who are participating, if you want to look at this, um, what should we do with this tin can? Should we reduce it, reuse it, or recycle it? If anybody's mm -hmm. got, go ahead, tell me. Reuse and recycle. Reuse or recycle, okay, great. And what about this box? Reuse lots, I love boxes. Absolutely, <laughs> reuse it. And like, you'll see some of the creatures that we you did created today, we were also able to recycle them. What about newspaper? Recycle and reuse. And reuse. So if you come to our virtual workshop on Thursday, we are going to reuse old newspapers to build a paper, a paper fort. And what about water? Do we want to reduce, reuse, or recycle? Reduce. Reduce. Great. 
Okay, so we've got a really good idea. So this is a fun movie that will explain each of those concepts a little bit better. Yay. So here, here we go. I'm Felicia French, a third generation Arizona and 32 year Army and National Guard veteran. Sorry about the ad. Um, we actually can't see it. Oh, yeah, I can't see it. Uh, stop hearing and then re okay. re so hello i am the earth yep the very planet <laughs> you can you can just hit pause with space bar words which start with the letter r which i love you can hit space bar sorry about that guys we're gonna try this again i'm right now at the screen that i want to share and All right, can you see it now? Yeah. yeah. Hello, I am the Earth. Yep, the very planet you live on. They are three words which start with the letter R, which I love. They are reduce, reuse and recycle do you know why i love them so much because they are almost magical words they can make all living things as well as myself be happier i said that they are almost magical because without your help it won't work they need all of you children in order to do the trick each and every one of you are the real three R's magicians, those three words which can change the world. Do you want to know how? Yes? Well, let's find out. The first R is for reduce. If you think about it, there are many things you don't need. When you go to the supermarket, I'm sure you can take your own canvas bags instead of using disposable ones given to you. Like that, you will be reducing the amount of plastic, which is very contaminating. And I'm sure that you don't need to print out so many documents or photos, nor leave lights, television, or computers on when you're not using them. If you remember this, you'll be reducing the amount of paper being used as well as energy, and in turn, will be helping to reduce the contamination. And these are just a few examples. I am sure you can think of many more different ways to reduce what you are using or creating unnecessary waste. The following question will help you with this task. Do I really need this or is this just a whim? The second R is for recycling. Now it is easier than ever to recycle things we don't need anymore so that they can be reused. Near your home, you can find places like the recycling station and containers for cans, plastic, paper, or organic waste. They each have specific colors to make it easier to identify. By using them, you will avoid contaminating nature, the rivers and seas, as well as the atmosphere, which is the air we breathe. And finally, we have the third R, which refers to reuse. How many things do you think we can reuse again and again instead of throwing them away? Let's see. A piece of paper that has only one side printed on, a carton box, a plastic bottle. You think now, with just a little bit of imagination, I'm sure you can come up with many more exciting and fun new uses for them. And remember, if you apply the three R's rule, you will make me a much cleaner planet with less contamination and where we can all enjoy a better life. Because as you know, children can make a world of difference. Sorry about that, guys. Um, 
Not the ad. <laughs> All right. So, any kids that are participating that are want to talk, mention what you learned from that little video? That it's a lot more bearable environment to reuse things. You got it. <laughs> you got it. So, let's go ahead and we've got one more video. Um, Look at the statistics. Americans throw away 28 billion bottles and it's jars true. every year. And so um, this- Are you sharing a slide or oh, because you can't see it? Thank you for telling me. Can you see it now? We can. Yes. Yes. All right. So um, here we go with the video, but uh, I probably am going to need to stop sharing and start again. Let's try it. We can see it just fine. You can see it just fine. Perfect. We're still on the slide. Um, okay, so I need to stop sharing and then start again. Our journey begins at the curb on pickup day. The recyclables that you placed in a recycle cart are picked up by our driver, who then delivers it to our material recovery facility. Once trucks arrive, they are weighed on our scale. Once the truck is weighed, our driver dumps the material into our MRF. Material is loaded in our drum feeder. distributes the material evenly to the conveyor belt. The material then makes its way to the first sorting station. Workers sort through the materials to remove items that cannot be recycled at our facility. pieces fall through our funnel screen and make their way across the center to the glass collection area. Rubber stars rotate to separate cardboard from other recyclable materials. Workers remove any remaining cardboard and non-recyclable items. Additional screens help the flow of material by sending paper over the screen and containers below. Paper is then sent to our baler where it's compacted into large bales. As the containers continue through the system, the tin cans are pulled out using a magnet. 
rest of the containers are sorted using one of our T-Tech machines, which looks at each container that comes across and separates it by type. Aluminum cans are separated by what we call an eddy current. The eddy current is a magnet which repels the cans into its own storage container. Once sorted, material is sent to the container baler. Bales are loaded into trailers which transport the material to various recycling facilities throughout the U.S. and abroad. All righty, and now we are back to our PowerPoint. So here are a few of the key takeaways. Um, we know that plastic bags, toys, hazardous materials, electronics aren't recyclable. In Flagstaff, we do have uh, days when you can um, try to repurpose your electronics. And we also have places that you can take electronics so that they don't go into the landfill and they're stripped down of pieces. Look at this. Each person on average throws away almost five pounds of garbage each day. And that is absolutely a huge amount. And so this is so important for us to consider those three R's. As we said before, 28 million bottles and jars. And th this is on a wonderful news. Aluminum cans are back on the shelves in two months and paper recycling has increased almost 90% since 1990. So we are becoming more aware of how we can damage the earth if we're not recycling and reusing and repurposing. And that's really one of the mottos of Tinkertopia um, is that we reuse, repurpose, recycle as much as we possibly can. So now comes the fun part where you guys can actually get engaged. We're going to create some creatures from recycled materials. So this one looks like um, maybe an old Easter egg and some pipe cleaner and some googly eyes. This one looks like it's made a lot from bottle caps and other miscellaneous things. And this appears to be made from a toilet paper roll um, and maybe uh, old bottle caps, um, colorful paper. So you want to look around your house for things that are either going to be thrown out or that you can reuse for another purpose. And so here are a couple that I've created. Um, this one up here was a paper plate uh, folded in half and then construction paper to make a little crab. And this was just some art that I made out of cardboard. And this little guy, um, can you see? This is some washi tape. Um, the owl is adorable, I really like the owl. <laughs> yeah. And then um, this is a toilet paper roll with ribbon and construction paper and magic marker. Um, so this uh, hopefully will get give you some ideas um, from looking at these pictures. And then Natalie and David, who are my chief assistants at Tinkertopia, are also online. And David, why don't you talk about the two you made and then Natalie about yours? Okay. Um, so on, on the, the one on top there is a frog. That one is made out of a uh, paper plate, construction paper, and I think just some glue and that's, those are, that's it. And then the one on the bottom is the mouse. <laughs> that's the, uh, the mouse was made out of a toilet paper roll. And then a, a few pieces of cardboard that I cut out for the face. And then I glued some pieces of paper for the whiskers. Great. 
And it looks like in the top one that you used a magic marker to make the eyes. Yeah. Okay. And Natalie. Yes. So because I'm a retired teacher, I made a teacher creature. And <laughs> this is made from a potato. Uh, let's see, I've got uh, a paper clip bent around to make glasses like I wear and some yarn. And my teacher's body is an old um, soap dispenser, hand soap. And then I've got pipe cleaner and I've got cardboard that I use to make one of my favorite books from when I was teaching. And I also really like, I would like to teach gardening. So I took a tomato for my garden. Oh, I thought that was gonna be like a substitute apple for the teacher. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I wanted to have a trowel too, but I couldn't figure out how to make that. <laughs> Okay, great. And then here are a few creatures that kids at Tinkertopia created. Um, up in the top left, um, these were just cardboard boxes that the child covered with construction paper and glued on some other paper. Um, this one uh, near, the, near the left is an old plastic bottle with a bunch of various and sundry things inside and some toilet paper rolls. And down below that is a, a wooden old, a wooden ball with um, some pipe cleaners and just magic marker for the face. And this one is made out of cardboard egg cartons, the various parts of the egg cartons. And then these funky ears are those fluffy kind of um, pipe cleaners. It looks like some popsicle sticks, a cork, googly eyes, and at the far right, um, lots of corks, and then the top of a plastic Easter egg. So these are all the sorts of recycle things that you might be able to find around the house. So think about the kind of creature you might like to build, and we're going to get creative and look for recycled and reusable materials that you can just find. Um, and then we'll actually start building. So whenever we do any kind of building projects at Tinkertopia, we use the engineering design process. Um, and David and Natalie, why don't you guys take turns explaining each of the steps, the five steps in the engineering design process. Okay, David, why don't you start? Sure, so the engineering design process starts with at the very top with ask. And the purpose of this step is to sort of figure out what you're trying to do. In our situation, our ask, what's the, what's the problem is we need to create a creature out of recycled building or recycled materials. So what can we do, what can we use what kind of creatures can we create? And the next step is to imagine, which means you brainstorm. Think about all the different things you want to build, um, all the approaches you might take. We often suggest draw, uh, I guess that's the next step to draw it. Um, just, just get any idea you can think of so that then you can pick the best one out of all of your ideas. And then the plan step follows that. And that's where you draw, maybe get a piece of paper and sketch an idea of what you might want to put together, maybe write down a list of materials that you've chosen to, to use. Um, and then the fun part really is when you get to start building. And you often find that you start to build something one way and you might change your mind, keep going, try all your ideas. And unless you're perfect, which I'm certainly not, <laughs> <laughs> you can always look back and find ways to improve it. And that's the last step. So when you, when you finished your, your creature, you might look and say, I could have used straws instead of popsicle sticks. And it would have turned out differently. But those are some examples. And that takes us back to the beginning where we start all over again. And we ask, how can we make this better? What materials could I have used that could have improved it? And so... This is something, uh, if you do get one of the steam kits that we're distributing this week, we have this as a flyer in your bag um, and we've got a, we put in a magnet so you can put it on your 
refrigerator door and remind yourself that this is how engineers think about problems and solve problems. So we love to use the engineering design process. Sasha, I saw that you had your hand up. Do you have a question? Yeah. yeah. What is it? Um, is it okay if I like make something besides like a mini creature, like a skateboard or something? That's okay, sure. The, the, our whole, our real message is that we want to reuse material that we're no longer using or use material that could be recycled. So um, you can choose to make something different than a creature if you'd like, sure. Any other questions? All right, the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and find some tape, some glue, some scissors, any of the tools that you think that you're going to want to use. Um, and if you have a hot glue gun that you're allowed to use at home, um, that's always fun because you can glue things pretty securely and pretty quickly. But not everybody has a hot glue gun at home, so glue stick and Elmer's glue, liquid glue work really fine too. And then you want to think about um, old styrofoam cups, bottle cup tops, straws, egg cartons, cereal boxes, um, cardboard boxes that um, mail comes in, old books, um, confetti, rubber bands. Um, I actually went out to the my tool uh, area, my garage, and found, you know, nuts and bolts and things like that that would be really nice to uh, use to recycle. And then our third step is to try to create. Um, and so here's a few more examples that you might think about um, when you're creating your um, creature. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing now. And so everybody go ahead and take some time um, to go out and look around your house for the tools that you'd like to use, as well as um, all recycled, reusable material that you'd like to bring together um, to create your creature. And we'll just stand by. And if you've got questions, just okay. speak on up and let us know. My sister's making a blanket or reused string. That would be great. Hey, Luke, welcome. I see that you've joined us. I'm so glad. Have you been missing Tinkertopia? Yes, I have. Wow. <laughs> hey, I see you. Great. Hope to see you back when we reopen. What are you going to build? I think I might try to build a small robot like thing. So this is it so far. And this is the sketch so far. Ah. Perfect. So Luke's using the engineering design process. So he's sketching what he wants to build. Terrific. So Olivia only has half an hour. So you've probably gotten all the information that you need. So you, whenever you need to leave, you can, and you can um, finish it up after um, some time at your convenience. Okay. And send us a picture. Oh, and David said wow. fabric counts. That's a good idea. How do I send you a picture? Uh, live. I'm going to share my screen again, and I will show you how to do that.
go ahead and write down this address, info at tinkertopia.org. So you can take a picture with a, a smartphone. Um, I copied it with my uh, computer control. Okay. And then I can just paste it into an email and like email you my picture. There you go. That sounds perfect. I'll leave this up for a little while. I should say send me photos, but you get the idea. <laughs> and we're going to post the photos of the, your creations on our Tinkertopia website. And I'll let you know when they're up there. So I'm going to go back one and just show a few other um, parts of the slideshow that um, just to give people ideas if they would like to see some of the other creatures that we created before. So are you seeing the three? Um, no, you got to share again. Okay. So here's a little bit of inspiration. What is it that that white fluffy sort of oh. hair? <laughs> that is um, something you you scrub with, and it it's an it's elasticized at the top, and then you can use it to clean. Oh. So it's like a it's like a scrubbing. <laughs> it, I, it, I it, thought it was shaving, shaving cream. Oh, no, it's, it's cotton. Huh. But don't you like my earrings? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and my ears? Yeah, I recognize them. So kids, while you're building, would you like to listen to either one of the videos again? All right, I'll, I'll stop sharing and get back to the videos and put them on. We should have reached out to Riley. We should have. I just thought of that. <laughs> I need to. Okay, let me know if. Hmm. All right, I think I finally got it.
know, I think people think of recycling and it's, that it's people bundling their newspaper and Boy this Scouts moving things and people are kind of fascinated and I guess they're surprised at sort of the large industrial and highly mechanized nature of the process. Uh, my name is Thomas Outerbridge and I'm the general manager for SIMS Municipal Recycling. Well, so we're in the business of receiving, processing, and marketing mixed recyclables that are collected by municipalities from their residents. We service the five boroughs of the city. It includes all rigid plastics, so everything from a you know, laundry hamper to a toy to a plastic bottle, uh, all glass and all metal products from tin cans to bed frames. You know, we have to basically take this mix and, and sort it to a fairly extensive degree to turn it into a commodity. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you'd think it's just garbage. The, the materials accumulate on the tipping floor, right? It's dumped there by sanitation or we unload our barges there. We then have a front end loader, a front end loader that feeds a conveyor and that will transport the material to the liberator. The liberator is a slow speed shredder call it the liberator because the idea is really not to cut things up but to really open bags and disentangle stuff people who live in high-rise buildings accumulate these bags in the basement so some people think plastic bags just because they're plastic they should be recycled so they stuff bags full of bags and then stick those in the bags and so the liberator rips everything apart so that when we introduce it to the sorting equipment the sorting equipment can do its job Disc screen are these discs and they spin and they throw the material forwards and there's gaps between those discs. So anything that's less than two and a half inches goes through the disc screen. And that is really targeting glass. So it's, it's, it's removing 95% of our glass. We send that to our glass plant in Jersey where then it goes through a whole nother set of sorting steps and then crush the remaining colored glass into an aggregate. After removing the glass, the material passes underneath large drum magnets, which are big drums that turn and pick up all the ferrous metals. Those ferrous metals then go to another trommel screen where we separate the smaller ferrous metals like tin cans from the bigger metal furniture and things we get. Then after we've removed the glass and the ferrous metal, we introduce everything that's left now on the belt to ballistic separators. Two-dimensional material will lie flat on these paddles and walk up a incline, whereas three-dimensional material will bounce back. So now our three-dimensional material uh, goes into a whole sequence of optical sorters. Different materials have a different spectrum in near-infrared light, so we can distinguish plastics by resin type. So it is looking for anything on that conveyor belt that is PET plastic. It's telling the air jets, here comes a PET water bottle. We use air effectively to blow it off of the conveyor belt and separate it from the balance of the material. Whatever is not ejected as PET then travels onto the next optical sorter. They go very, very fast. They go much faster than a human being can possibly pick. They're looking at um, seven tons of material an hour. Each step along the way, you're going after one more item until you left with Ideally nothing, but of course odds and ends that shouldn't be in there that end up as residue at the end of the process. Most products are put into balers that make bales that similar to people might think of hay bales. I mean, basically we compress the material for shipping. And then um, as sorted commodities, we then ship out of here to customers. People are absolutely buying this stuff. Um, it does go up and down with the market. Yeah, we can do probably 800 tons a day. The uh, participation rate, I think, is going up pretty significantly. So we're seeing more and more material. We still know there's a huge amount of still going to landfill. Probably maybe 40% now of the recyclables that are meant to go in the recycling bin are still going into the trash. So please recycle. All right. How's everybody coming? Sasha, how are you doing?
Well, I think that we will um, put the slide of where to send photos up one more time. Oh, David, you've got your uh, mouse. All right, nice. Good. And Natalie, can you show your, um, your teacher, your retired teacher up close? I'm gonna try sort of in pieces. <laughs> You, maybe it's easier to move your computer than you. Yeah, I'm gonna and tell me if, when you can see. His head. Uh, mm -hmm. you can, we can see your head and glasses. And there okay. we go. And there's my table. Excellent. My oh, that's really nice. That's great. Okay, Callum and Luke and Sasha and Mackenzie, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the address for um, sharing photos up. And we hope you'll join us on Thursday, also at four o'clock. Excellent. Oh, that's really nice. I am joining you. I put it Our down on my agenda as a priority. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to uh, gather together a tape and old newspapers. I can't open it. And we're going to build paper forts on Thursday. So, what kind of paper can we use on Thursday? Um, we can use uh, old newspapers. Um, Paper that's been printed on both, you know, that's that's either printed on both sides or just printed. Um, old construction paper that you've decided you're not going to use for some reason. Okay. Um, and um, I don't know. Uh, even yeah. go ahead, David. I think that's about all the paper that you can come up with. Anything that you'd recycle. So any size paper will work. Yeah. Okay. Um. So what, me and my brother decided to team up. He's a uh, Mackenzie on there. That's he's using my mom's uh, computer. And um, so we're gonna build a skateboard with um something to pump it up. So like with a bottle. We're building. We, a so we found a bot empty bottle, Gatorade bottle, and we're putting the pump that our bike pump, and we're trying to figure out we put water in it, and we're gonna attach it to uh, one of our skateboards, and um we're gonna compress it with the air pump, so it can. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <That's cool. laughs> so I think you need to take a movie and send it to me. I still wouldn't do it justice. <laughs> that would be great. Okay, you guys, if you want to write this down so you can send me your video or your still picture when you finish, it's just info at tinkertopia.org. But be sure you spell Tinkertopia right. Bye. Is that address also in the, the brochure from the Festival of Science or not? I think it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, great. Okay. It's also on my web page. Um, why don't I bring that up right now? And oh dear. Okay, so this is our online workshop. Are we seeing my, uh, the website? Uh it's still showing the, the address to send it to, yes. Okay. So basically when you change media, you need to stop sharing and then start sharing again. So we'll have to figure that out better for next time. So right here is on the Tinkertopia website, 
Um, here's our online workshop. There's the Zoom meeting. And then here's the address to send it to. So it's in the flyer on our website, on the SciFest website. Um, so lots of places to get it. Okay, so you guys, it's been fun to visit with you and we'll hopefully see you again on Thursday. So we're gonna say goodbye for now. <laughs> Bye. Buddy. Um, should we three stay on? These sure. guys may have gone out to test theirs and that's their mo Sasha's mom, I think. Uh -huh. so I think that's actually, what he said. Let's, let's go ahead and end because it's still on YouTube right now. Okay. And then um, I'll send you uh, one, a new credential in a, just a minute or two. Okay. All right. Thanks for Bye. joining us. Goodbye from Tinkertopia.